So let, let's get straight into this. So you grow up, possibly in the 80s, 90s, watching all these action films. You see all these, like, you know, these really, like, buff guys and they're, like, shagging loads of hot women. And you think, right, yeah, okay, that, that's going to be me, that is. I'm going to do that. But the pro- there's a problem. You're ginger. So you have to make your own films and cast your own people in it. Is that what happened? <laughs> Well, I'm technically blonde, but I knew you were yeah. going to say this. I knew you were going to say, yeah. and you can actually you can actually get away with that because you're not one of the ones with the missing eyebrows and eyelashes. You know, the ones that all other kids are scared of. But no, <laughs> oh, okay, technically blonde. There's definitely some lemon juice in there for Jasper, isn't there, or some sun? For in sure. Already, but... Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. But but let me tell you, my hero really is Daniel Craig because he was the first blonde Bond, and that was like when I when I felt like you know. My, my my species had arrived, you know. Well, that, that's not, that's nice that you can identify as a blonde person for uh, for Hollywood purposes. Uh, who is yeah. who is your favourite Bond, by the way? Well, actually, oh, oh, definitely Daniel Craig. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the, he's and the first so actor, really? Yeah. Well, the first actor that I loved though that was sort of gave me hope was Kiefer Sutherland in Lost Boys because okay, right. it was the blonde, the first blonde hero I'd seen where I was like, I could do that and. As a result, you know, I, I got that bit in Queen of the Damned, which was my um, entry into film. Right. Okay. Yeah. Keep yeah. Sutherland. I can see that. Um, although I have, I, I have got, I've got some comments that are for you from the thing, and, and one of them is relevant. I was going to leave these till later, but <laughs> um, I, I've, I, there was definitely, there's definitely a lookalike in here. Someone's mentioned a lookalike. Oh, it would have been Simon Pegg. No, it's not. No. Uh, so this is from uh, one of my viewers, uh, Greg uh, Nielsen. Um, yeah. As he says. He looks like Reese Iffen's way less interesting and less handsome little brother. <laughs> and then, and then he's got a suggestion: they should do a movie together where they are twins, but one sucks. <laughs> Look, you know, I mean, the amount of times I've said that I'm like the poor man's, you know, um, Hemsworth or the poor or the poor yeah, man's yeah. Paul Hogan or something like. Yeah, like yeah. I get it. I'm okay. I'm not. You know, I'm not going to cry about it. Fine, I get but it. But Reese Siffins, is, is that's too low, is it? Because I mean, he's not. Oh, that's too low. Yeah, yeah, fine, okay. And actually, Paul Hogan. You, I assume you're talking about a young Paul Hogan. Is, is yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Because no, there's, there's no, and, and I mean, talking about the whole blonde thing as well. You know, there's not even. I mean, in my city, for example, you know, it's it's very much with casting. It's very stereotypical. You know, the tall, dark, handsome. Yeah. Um, uh, the Baywatch type, whatever. So you're absolutely right. So um, I guess with Jasper, which was my breakout kind of comedy yeah. i was trying to yeah. break the mold and did you notice i like i had a i had quite a stomach and i and i kept eating on purpose because i was trying to break the stereotype and do that like for, for the gag right i can't relate to that because th- these things happen naturally for me but yeah I, I, <laughs> no, I, 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 didn't, I didn't notice that but that's so it's a bit like castaway but like where you've actually <laughs> forked it like on purpose yeah. It's. Re- I mean, you know, I, I i am all about the anti-hero i'm just trying to break the mold i i, I guess it yeah. was sort of I wouldn't say um, out of spite or something like, you know, my, my movies are very slapstick, very tongue in cheek, but yeah. it, I'm also having a go because it's so competitive. And sometimes I feel like not just with me, with people I meet and see that there's so much talent that goes to waste. And I, yeah. and I never wanted to be at the power under the, the kind of demise of the casting directors. I thought, well, if they're not going to do it, I'll, I'll do it myself, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, no, fair enough. And I, yeah. I feel like there's a real, a real strength in that because you know, you kind of only get one shot. You know, we don't know what's going to happen after after this life, you know. No. If it, if it even goes on any longer. So who knows? Exactly. We, could all be, we could all be hit by a bus. I couldn't because I never leave the house, but you could. <laughs> um, although if I, when I do leave the house, I don't go anywhere near buses, but that's just a, you know. <laughs> Do you get on the whether... tube? Because I, I hear the tube's dangerous. Like, isn't it? There's like a suicide there, like, comp, yeah, like I mean, uh, uh, so I, about, about, I think it was 10 years ago, I used to have a job, like, in Canary Wharf. And uh, I used to, when I used to, and it, honestly, every other day, like, um, you know, obviously it's a really sad thing that someone's fucking thrown yeah. themselves in front of the tube and like and died. But, you know, it yeah. gets to the point where everyone's so fucking numb to it that like, so, oh, we've had an accident. So the, so the tube's going to have to stop. And everyone's just like, oh, fucking self. Oh, Why don't you shoot himself? Yeah. yeah. Can I just go to work? God, not again. I know. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. It's pretty, I mean, people are depressed enough on the tube anyway, because A, yeah. they live in London, and B, they've got a job. <laughs> so, like, it's just fucking like, tedious. But, yeah, no, so I, I don't I don't tend to. I moved out of London during the... Uh, during, oh, you did? You know, yeah, oh, during the, um, 
during uh, the lockdown situation. Yeah, that's smart. I thought if I'm going to be fucking held prisoner, I may as well get a nicer cell. So I live out. <laughs> uh, I live out in like rural Buckinghamshire now, which is which is nice. Uh, yeah, and my nice. co-host G lives up the road, so that's great. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen uh, him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a bit he's a big fan. He'll he's he's actually oh, cool. giving me a question to ask you, but I fucking I forgot to write it down. And I'll get it. I'll but I'll get it later. Actually, you I've got put plenty him of time. And I'll answer him. Oh uh, yeah, he yeah he will do. Cool. He's got a number of them, but I said I'm not asking those. Those are just too fucking rude. But, <laughs> um. Okay. So now on the on the serious origins of like so um yeah. when how when how old were you when you decided you wanted to like if you always wanted to be like yeah. a film actor was that the deal. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, you know, I don't want to sound, um, you know, uh, it's cliche and say I sort of fell into it or grew into it, but yeah, yeah. it was a couple of pivotal things. Like one was uh, I had an uncle on my dad's side who was like the first guy to open an actual VHS video store in my city. Right. It was like, yeah, yeah. We, took, we took it in 1980. And yeah. so, um, you know, I used to get the preview takes. So I'd, I'd have movies on video before they're at the cinema. So my house was always very electric. You know, all the kids yeah, would yeah. come over. It was very communal. Um, and then he gave me my first job. So, you know, I had the, the movies were always for free and the posters and the memorabilia that came yeah, with it. Yeah. Um, and then I had another uncle who was a chief carpenter. So he was actually on film sets all around the country and did some really big jobs like Moby Dick and Noah's Ark. And I eventually yeah. went and worked for him as well. Uh, and then we did a couple of movies together as well. So it was kind of being on set in, in a crew perspective, but then also seeing it from a retail perspective. Right. So I was kind of getting both sides. And so, um, you know, the love of film and I guess the camera, it just kind of, was it was just upon me and my grandfather who was a projectionist in the war in world war ii corpse um introduced me to like super eight and 16 mil when i was very young right. uh, and he was a p and he was a pianist so um i was very lucky as a child he would actually he would he would play um silent films usually horror reels black and white bella lugosi boris karloff etc um and he would score live so okay, yeah, I would yeah, invite yeah. kids over, but by, you know, 15 minutes, I'd be glued to the screen like this, but 15 yeah. minutes later, I'd turn around, the kids would all be gone because I was shit scared of the horror movies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I was constantly alone in this in this uh, hobby, you know, of horror. Yeah. You know. Well, that sounds uh, eerie, but as well as well as exciting. Um, so yeah, that's, so uh, and you, what, did you go to film school or anything like that? Or yeah, did you, absolutely. You did? So, so what straight, I did, away, straight away, you were right on the path, like immediately. Absolutely. And, and so, but I, again, I it was, it was both sides of the coin. So I would go and learn acting, but yeah. then I would also go and do the filmmaking. And it was great because when I did the film schooling, um, I'd had, I had enough gusto to kind of get cast in all the student films. So there was this one year, I think it was second year film school where I acted in a ridiculous number of movies. It was like 25 films in a year. Yeah. It was like one every two weeks. And once you do that, you, you kind of, you don't need any more schooling. It's more than enough. But again, breaking the mold, I didn't go through the university route. I went through a TAFE route. So I ended up that, actually, that? it's cut tertiary as opposed to university. So yeah, what's, more, what's more like a public school versus a private school. Yeah, okay. So but, yeah. I, I went the kind of other route. So some of my mates were going to university getting their degrees, whereas I was going through the tertiary route. But what I did was I helped pioneer a course where it was a, originally a two year, but I went to the state training board and uh, got approval and kept and pioneered it and ended up being a five year, so, which is what I did, which was only an advanced diploma, but it was a five year. But yeah. The, uh, but I had my hands on all the gear, so I was able to make all the films I wanted to because I had first dibs on all the equipment. So I saved a lot of money doing that. I mean, I'm assuming the qualifications mean absolutely nothing. Like as soon as you get to a certain level, like, I mean, pretty uh, much. It, yeah, and people know you're right, it works. You're right. so they, yeah, you're right. It's um, it, it becomes really more about you uh, being comfortable with yourself. You know, some right. people feel like. They need that piece of paper to get the validation. Some yeah. are like, I don't need it at all. Um, I'm somewhere in the middle. I want to know, again, what's happening on both sides and be able to have that conversation uh, and yeah. then navigate. Because sometimes, you know, you, you are having um, a, a really casual chat about a project with an actor and then all of a sudden you're having a, a heated debate with a, with a possible or a potential investor who's an executive that's got serious money on the table. So... You know, you've got to know uh, all ages, all ethnicities, all social classes. You know, you've really got to be a magician. Yeah. Yeah. 
completely the opposite of my life, where I only know one <laughs> type of person in the same age. So there. But that's the way I like it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Awesome. I'll, prob- I'll, probably, have to, I'll probably have to delete that bit, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's more well, it's, it's more stress free. There's nothing wrong with indulging. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I've certainly had my bouts where I've you know been workaholic and thought, what the hell am I doing? You know, I need to spend more time, um, in, you know, enjoying life. You know, because so much yeah. of my time is kind of you know in the books and in the edit and in the script yeah. and in the rehearsals and it's it, it's exhausting. You know, people don't you, just don't really don't the, the audience members don't give a shit. They don't know how much work goes in. They just want the you know the eighty minutes or ninety minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Channel surf, you know. So it's so obviously it's a business. I mean, if, if you don't yeah. mind me asking, and do do know, tell me to, to yeah. uh, like, sure. do you know who Neil Breen is? Neil Breen, what he's, nationality? He's a guy. Uh, he's, he's a US guy. It's okay. an American guy that is incredibly famous for making like only bad films, and in all of their all vanity projects. Yeah. Uh, and I can't That's imagine. Funny, I, I, no, I'm. I mean, I'm thinking of the guy from um, uh, from the room. Um, oh, I yeah, Tommy, whatever. Yeah, Tommy. Um, yeah. But no, I, I I don't think I know this other guy you're talking about, which okay. is strange. Yeah, right. You have to. I, I'm gonna, I'll send you some links afterwards. Yeah, so I was going to say I'm gonna have a look. But, yeah, I mean, but this guy, this is different. This is like new, new. I mean, I've got was... a feeling someone. I've got a feeling that there was a, a a press review I did once, and the guy compared me to this guy, but I haven't okay. seen his films. Right now, that is yeah. that's a really harsh comparison because I mean, wow. this guy, he's like, I think he must be about sixty five, but like, oh. he's trying, he's trying to look in his forties. <laughs> I, I assume. I mean, it, these films are terrible, and and oh, I think I've got to see one. It's so hard to see whether this guy is taking it seriously. serious. You think, you think he's got to be yeah. joking, but he's definitely yeah. not joking. But anyway, so the, reason I, the reason I bring him up is because um, he, so he started, I think he's an architect and he was a well-off architect. So he sort of had all these funds that he could throw into all this film stuff. Um, I, I mean, I don't know, how would you get started in this? So would you say, for example, go and get sponsorships from someone or uh, you your just parents loaded? Me, or, you just reminded me of that film with um, the Lord of the Dance guy. Have you Michael seen Michael Flatley? Oh my god. Did you what? see the trailer to his film that he's financed? No. Oh mate, you you I'm I've got one back at you. You have right, to see Thank this. you. Right, make I'm it's, marking that down now. Oh mate, it's been dubbed like possibly like the worst. Like think if you think if you type in, you know, the worst film ever made into Google, this comes up. Is this called and Blackbird? He, oh mate, you have to you that is so that's your next review. You right, okay, have thank to you. See that. Okay. Yeah, you'll love it. That sounds, that sounds good. You'll love it. Yeah. So with that, um, yeah. So with fi- yeah. Go on. Sorry. Yeah. So with yeah. with financing and stuff, do you do you yeah. go for it yourself or is it? I mean, it's yeah. also all these <laughs> expensive projects. So something like Jasper, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'd imagine. Well, I'm not even going to guess. How much? What would the budget for something like that be? Pretty much right. it, anything. Th- 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 there's a thing here called the MBA, which is a tax bracket where. If a movie hits a certain amount, yeah. the government will put in the other half. It's normally got to be at least five hundred thousand. But right, if you're okay. under yeah. five hundred thousand, it yeah. doesn't matter whether it's five grand, ten, fifteen, fifty, a hundred. It's going to be in the same cesspool. So it's right. a great question because I see a lot of guys. They go out and they, they you know, they die hard for their film and they spend eighty grand or a hundred grand or one hundred and twenty grand. And I'm like, stop. It's yeah. not if it's not going to hit that five hundred, yeah. don't don't even bother it. So, and my agent said to me, if you're going to be under five hundred, which I am, yeah, you don't tell anyone the the amount because you don't want you know because you might make a film for fifteen that looks a hundred, you're not going to tell anyone. Yeah, that's part well, of you, the you can you can scene. do and that, but that, and that's a lot of the thing with low budget films. I mean, like if if, you, if you've got low budget, you don't try and do like a fucking space opera, do you? Like you don't you know you don't get all out all oh, that effect. Hundred percent. My gospel yeah. is. Do, do not make a sci-fi film if it's if yeah. it's going to be low budget. And, and yeah. I mean, and here I am. I just bloody made one. But you know, it's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be. My, my sci-fi film is a bit more like the Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs, as you know, it's the heist film, but you don't see the heist. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, your writing's got to be so clever. And I'm only at that level now after ten films to be able to do that. But there is yeah. no way I would head out to make a sci-fi film on a low budget. It's just it's it's almost pointless. And because yeah. you're up against Close Encounters, you can't beat it. You're not going to no, beat no, it, so don't no. even try. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. Oh, so I'm a uh, yeah. So obviously this is an early morning for me. So I'm going to have. To I love play. it. We're already raring. You're going to need a Red Bull. <laughs> Good promo. <laughs> Wait, 
so while we're talking while we're talking about funding come on it's got you have they have to have given you money for that i'll tell you about that i'll tell you about that so um yeah i think it was at a point as well because it's one of the earlier films trying to find ways to um you know to get sponsorship because sometimes they you know they will come on board they will pay you yeah. Uh, these guys were funny. Red Bull, I took funny guys. I talked to them. They they said, um, you know, we'll come on board. I said, great. So um, and they started sending um, slabs of Red Bull to the house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm like, this is you know. So a truck would turn off and there'd be you know every <laughs> ten slabs of Red Bull. What's going yeah. on here? And so they said, you know, we, you've got to feed like for us to do this, we want you to drink it at least twice. Which is why you see me in the car yeah, doing, the, doing the, the skull. Did they, did, they say, um, did they specify amount of time you have to take with it though? Like, because I mean, like, you know, no, there's, there's this, no, I think, and then there's I, what I just <laughs> did. I mean, like, you know, because you must have known that everyone watching it was going to go, "What?" You know, yeah, like, what the is, fuck is why he is this scene in there? And yeah. then it happens again, yeah. and then oh, it's brilliant. I think I, I, I think I kind of um, I think running time's tricky because when you do these. 75 page 80 page scripts like one page is supposed to equal one minute but right. very often when you shoot it's half that time so sometimes when you're filmmaking because technically you've got to be over 70 minutes to be deemed feature okay. so in shots like that you kind of do take your time but i've probably dragged some of them out intentionally that's then become funny yeah um, fine. sometimes yeah. on purpose sometimes by mistake sometimes by accident um, but they, so, I remember them saying, you know, we want you to, we want to see you skull at least two red balls, and one, <laughs> one's a the full strength, and one's a light. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, I'll tell you what, the light sugar. ones, the light ones just aren't as good, are they? Well, I'm they're not, not good, allowed to say that, but like, I am. <laughs> the light ones, there's something I don't know. There's, yeah. they're, they're just not that. It just doesn't have the same taste, does it? Well, like, they basically kept sending these slabs, and so I was like, okay, so I started shooting, but I was under the assumption they were gonna, they were actually gonna give me some money. And, yeah. and it, it just kind of didn't come. They kept sending the drinks. And so the crew were like, well, you Whoa, know. It's- I, I, hang on, hang on, sorry. sorry. So you've included those scenes for free Red Bull. <laughs> Fucking hell. Well, is- <laughs> but I, I was, well, as far as catering goes, I was able to, you know, feed the crew. I mean, you know, they, they had their yeah. beverages. They had Red Bull for life. Yeah, they must have um, been fucking but, tweaking. But the money didn't shops. come. Uh, my God. The money didn't come. It was quite sad. Well, so that's. That yeah. tells that tells my audience something about the people who work at Red Bull. Awful. <laughs> uh, right, and, and on to this question. The other question I had, obviously, on that on that line, is the silver fucking Honda. I so, know. So is, 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 is that... Did, that wasn't paid, was no. it? No, so... To be brutally honest, because <clears throat> the movie was shot in between COVID, I was yeah. trying to emulate what life was like, which was very much, at the time, you would only... Commute to get your coffee, commute to get your strip right. shopping or to see okay. your friend, whatever. And it was almost like The Sims. It was like a game. I just saw everything from a bird's eye view, this tiny yeah. little microcosm where you would only go back and forth, back and forth, and kind of that that thus became the script. Fine. And I think because that movie was being shot in that time but in that during the lockdowns, um, yeah. I was just emulating what was going on at the time. So it was mundane, it was boring, it was crazy, but then it kind of did become funny. And when I premiered at um, Monster Fest, the uh, the host was classic. You would have loved it because we were in the Q and A, and I said, um, and I, I was reflecting, and I was like, "Shit!" And it was the first time I'd seen it with an audience. And I said, "I think I've got too many car shots." And he said, and he said, very monotone, "No, no, I think you should have had every single one of those." You know. <laughs> Yeah. So um, uh, well, so I mean, I'm glad you did because it work, works for me. But um, yeah, the I, jokes I mean, on I, me. I thought that's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely loved oh. that. It just it was like never ending. It's just a, 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 between every scene. Oh, I can't. But also, stop. if you think about it, though, that kind of was what it was like for the character as well, because his life was he was stuck. He was going between the two women yeah. and and no. it was just just frustration you know I so it was, see it was you're clutching a straw there i feel i feel <laughs> that, yeah, definitely yeah. <laughs> yeah. let it go that. also whose car was it is it your car oh uh, it was just just one of the crew just one of the crew um yeah right okay uh the next so next thing so you you've been described as as among other things as an award-winning director 
it, yes, it, would you like great, me to learn? It's great, right. I'll tell you, tell you so, so I used to work at a call center, right? I was, I was, a, I was an operations manager at a call center. And they oh, yeah. used to be like awards for this stuff. And we, like call center right. of the year award or whatever bullshit like that. And I, I thought, oh, that sounds good that we've won this. But then I found out that we were paying like loads of money to this company to give us awards. Is that what you've done? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So, okay. so the legitimate awards are the, well, the top, the, the biggest ones are California Film Awards. So right. yeah, yeah. that was a legit submission. And um, okay. that was a crazy day because I was having a, a tough time in the industry at that point and sort of contemplating quitting for the biz for the first time. Yeah. And I got a, I got a letter in the mail saying, you know, you've won California Film Awards. And I was like, this, this can't be real. Yeah. So I sort of rang my agent and, t- and it was like, oh my God, this is, this is legit. Um, yeah. So that was probably the big award. But, you know, there's three tiers of these awards that you can get in these festivals. And there's the ones you're talking about where you pay and they're very yeah. lowbrow and you'll get right. caught eventually. Okay. Then there's the middle range, which is kind of where I've won a lot of mine. So like I've won Melbourne Underground Film Festival and California and um, oh, the Indie Gathering. That's a big one that I won in America. So I have won some pretty established ones. But then yeah. and then you've got obviously, you, you know, your Khan and your Oscars and that's at the next level. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, and, is, is it, that, and that's the dream, I assume, that one day it can, can feel mm. Although Look, the problem is now, you know, we, you, and, you and I, you know, we're at a similar age. The thing I'm finding now is that the older we get, the more information we get, the more that these things seem kind of, I, I shouldn't say rigged, but it does seem to be the, do you know what I mean? Well, like, cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean I, I, I'd convenient. be very surprised if they weren't completely bought and paid for, like, like all of it. Like, yeah, there's, there's, there's too much, there's too much going on. There's a mate of mine in LA who said, um, he knows someone who who hadn't really gotten any money until they got an Academy Award. Right, that it okay. was it was a systematic thing, um, and and that's why you're going for it. Like and and actors like you know Matt Damon and Leo and that they're they're on the kind of you know there's this there's this apparent kind of mystery top 100 list that all the actors yeah. try to get on, and if you get on that list, then you get all the big gigs. So yeah. I think it's more it's it's the machine. You know, right? Yeah, and I think so. I'm a bit more rebellious. I'm a little bit more um, do it yourself, DIY, um, break the mold. I'm more in a grey area, you know. And, and what I you're saying of... is, can't be bothered with that Hollywood top 100 list. No, <laughs> didn't, want, didn't want to be on it anyway. No, you didn't want to be on it anyway. They asked me. I um, said, no, fuck off. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, what well, the woman who uh, who sang um, "Take My Breath Away" Top Gun, and she declined. The Oscars, and she said it was her her lifelong regret. You know, um, yeah. you hear these stories. People that's, have been I mean, invited. That, and that said, no. a, that's an absolutely brilliant song. I absolutely love yeah. it. Do you I, love I, Top Gun? Uh, not really. No, it's all right, but um, I, it's not. I'm like, but I do use that. So I use that song, "Take My Breath Away," in any video I have with that's got a character that's got asthma. <laughs> I always do that. Um, and I haven't been copyrighted yet, so thanks, Berlin, or the people like. But no, it's a brilliant song. Those sounds are, are, are fantastic. That there's that. Oh, I, love that. It. I don't know what synth it's done on, but right at the start. Did you like uh, Risky Business? It was all right. Yeah, I'm not. Like, mm. I'm, I'm not a massive like. I mean, I do like Tom Cruise. Well, at the moment, he's yeah. one of the only decent people around, isn't he? Everyone else. True. Is well, isn't that funny? Ever. Like he went from being kind of like, you know, this crazy off the wall guy. And now he's like, you know, one of the last that's actually still kind of functioning properly. Yeah. 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 You know? yeah. I mean, crazy. I, I, I have to say I've just, in general, I, I, I don't really watch new films anymore because, um, because I'm with you. you. Because they're shit. I'm with you. Um, and like, oh, and look, DC, DC Marvel. I can't, I can't, I can't, the suspension of disbelief is gone as soon as I see yeah. the promo because I'm seeing everything on Insta, Twitter, or Facebook before I'm even in the cinema. There, there's no mystery. There's yeah. no. Um, there's there's just there's no there's no suspense. It's a, everything's given to you first. Yeah. You know, back in the day, you know, you would have to hunt pretty hard to find a featurette to go. Oh my god, I love that film. I wonder what it was like to work on it. And you'd have you'd find a special feature on a bloody laser disc or something to yeah, yeah. try and find you know that that favorite movie. Now there's, it's just it's overkill. There's just so much information that the you know again the miss on scene is kind of you know subtracted from the overall experience. Um, well, I, and, you I, know, remember, then, it, I remember that like uh, when the Jurassic Park before Jurassic Park came out yeah. the tra- the ori- the first trailers for Jurassic Park didn't even yeah. show a fucking dinosaur like literally Absolutely. Like, you only saw the eye. The, that's right it was the eye and it was the needle and the mosquito bit or whatever 
and that and that had everyone like really excited about it. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, also, I've no, I've, I've absolutely no interest. I mean, this Marvel's business. I just can't believe how much crap they're coming out. I did watch oh. the Marvel stuff like when a few years ago, and I thought it was mm. good. Like things like Captain America: The Original One. Uh, the first one. Yeah, I'm not into like superhero stuff at all, really. I mean, it's not you know, I'm not, not me, a middle aged man. I, I mean, it's not but, aimed at me anyway. But I'm the same. I'm not. Yeah. I don't. You know, I didn't. I didn't really collect comics, and I didn't. Yeah, it just wasn't my bag. I think I was yeah. more more horror. But 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 that's going back to really the origins of filmmaking, because you'd know as well. Like the first films are black and white, and they are horror. I mean, you've got to go back to Nosferatu and the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and. Um, you know the German and the G- German horror. You know, like the first the first films. Um, and then you, if you follow that way, what? Well, well, if you start with that and then you get into Hammer horror and you get into the right. Vincent Price movies, yeah, you're going on a kind of a, a you know a tr- you're on a train and you're heading down a track that takes you into what I really deem cinema. And okay. that genre was so impactful. I mean, I, th- I do believe that the very first short film or kind of f- film frame is, is, uh, is supposed to be something, something loosely um, uh, to do with, um, with hell and the devil, believe right. it or not. So, um, and there was a thing with Christianity where in the early days they believed that film was evil because you were looking at life in 24 frames. Okay. Yeah, this is a real yeah. thing. So, yeah. so, so, so the church would say, you know, you're being given a false impression of reality and you're looking at it in 24 frames and life's not in 24 frames, so therefore it must be evil. And it's just interesting because if you look at the birth of cinema, it's, it's horror. Yeah. So, you know, that's, um, uh, I guess, as far back as what I went with my, uh, uh, with my, uh, my pastime yeah, you yeah. Know, up until now. You know, and first films are good horror because they're low budget. You know, if you do, you can, you don't need a lot. You know, you can have scary characters, a lot of blood out in the woods. You know, there, there's so many ways to make a, an impactful film in horror genre without much money. And that's, that's what I did. And that's what a lot of people should do if they're going to go down that route, I think. Well, I mean, I think sometimes like a, a big budget can like hamper a film because you're sort of forced into doing stuff. Whereas, like, if you have got lo- low budget, you should. For, in order for a low budget film to be successful, it has to be written yeah. properly, it has to be acted well, and everything like that. You know, uh, you know, watching things like Transformers or Fast and the Furious is yeah. just like, you know, oh come on, like yeah. The, the last few were just ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm the same as you. I think like when they when they make the first one and they try hard to reinvent the wheel. That's when yeah. they've got you, yeah. but when it's just you know sequel after sequel after sa- there's nothing new. I mean, I hate to say it, but even with the new um, Mission Impossible trailer, aside from the bike jump stunt, everything yeah. else I've seen in a Bond film, there's nothing else original about it. Like yeah. Cruise in the small car going through. Like we've seen all this. We've seen yeah, well, everything I mean, in that trailer. It's virtually impossible now to do things that you haven't seen uh, without, That's true. You know, without That's involving true. ridiculous CGI. Uh, which, which pe- people are getting sick of that. Like, there's a lot, a number of people, especially like proper film people, who are like, "Oh, I hate yeah. the CGI. I want, I want like, practical effects again." Which, fair enough. I mean, they, they did look. They, you know, they were when yeah. they were good. They were good. But the problem is, that's why stuff. I like, I like Clint Eastwood because you know, apart from the fact that he's released a film at the cinema and he's in his nineties, that's just unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, he's keeping it real. He's still doing drama and he and his code and his core is there are still stories to be told that don't need a green screen. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I yeah. love that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's funny because the conversations I've had recently, people are thirsty for kind of the stuff I've been doing. You know, it's well, like I've had I, a lot of people say that like real stories that, that I can probably relate to, like this could actually happen. Well, this, maybe is why, this is why I bring this up because I, that surely at the moment there's just so much like anti Hollywood feeling. I'm certainly on, certainly right. in my corner of the internet where like you've got a lot of people that would just fucking hate everything that comes out yeah. uh, for whatever reason, uh, and then and there must be like a huge gap. So if you know if you if you were to do something or anyone like any of your peers were to do something that absolutely nailed it, you know yeah. there's a real opportunity there to get like an almost. Uh, like a, an audience, you know, like when, you know, whenever money. there's a, like a political uh, thing and somebody provides an alternative, like you've seen this Bud Light stuff, someone comes out with like this beer called, um, I don't yeah. know, 
Stars and Stripes, whatever, and then all of a sudden everyone yeah. buys it because they're like, I'm going to jump on that. And it's an, it might not be the audience yeah. people want, but it's an audience you can get, I think, I think. If I think you're, you're right. You're, you're, touching on, you're touching on a nerve that I've been thinking about as well, where if the right person was given the right opportunity, you could get the new Tarantino. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they're not, they don't seem to be taking the risks, and I'm worried that that's because that risk would be for the kind of, you know, plus 40 market, which is yeah. you know, on the other side of the hill, and yeah. that the next gen don't actually kind of vibe to it. Yeah, see, so I'm, I'm, a, well, I'm, I'm not sure know? because like, it's certainly in like, if, if you meet young people, I'm not saying I meet young mm. people all the time because obviously I don't meet people all the time, but like it's a, young people I've spoken to, it's just it's, it's, this rumour about young people all being into a certain thing. It's just, yeah. it's just not, it's just not reality. You know, it's I still, reality. I still see, I sit at the pub, I see normal groups of like 18 to 21 year olds and they're like, Good. they're totally just exactly the same as we are, as we were when it. we were younger. That's great uh, to hear. Just, but I think it's, I think honestly, this is fucking media and Twitter bullshit where it's like, yeah. oh, ev everyone's fucking this or that and that like, everyone believes this and believes that. I don't think it's true. I mean, I know, you know, Private school yeah. kids here have got an extremely different yeah. view of life than, uh, you know, some of my friends' kids yeah. are like are getting up to like 17, 18, and they're normal. Mm. That's like just exactly like I was. Um, and like, good. so, so there is, mm. there is still that market out there for, for younger people. Mm. Um, oh, that's just, good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, yeah, it's interesting time because everything's sort of transitional because attention spans are so quick now because of fucking TikTok. Which yeah, well, I, I mean, that, that, that is, that's always going to be an issue. Yeah. I can't handle it. No. Um, it's, well, it's kind of like when I started out, the feature film was a very special thing to make and, yeah, yeah. uh, it was a process and an experience in itself. And now with the attention spans being so, so small, I've met people that don't give a shit, you know, like even people that want to be actors that say yeah, feature, yeah. No, no. like they just want to do a commercial, get paid 10 grand for a day yeah. Yeah. and cool. I'm, I'm a legend. Oh, you know, I mean, I, me understandable, out, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, easy money. I mean, I you know, can't really um, can't really fault somebody for wanting mm. to do that. But yeah, you're I know, not if you want to you yeah. yeah. make something of your life, like I mean, that's that's the thing. It's people who want to achieve something. Yeah. I'm assuming I'm assuming you're somebody who wants to who wants to leave this world after achieving something. I'll, I'll be happy if I just Look spend as much time on the sofa as possible. But like, there are ambitious people who <laughs> actually want to who want to leave a legacy. But you've got a very cool channel, which I love. And, you know, that's why I reached out because um, this, the movies that you, and I'll say it now, you can use this even in your intro if you want. Yeah. Okay. I've spent my life also watching terrible movies <laughs> and then gone and made terrible movies. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, so, you know, but I, so the ones, the ones I've watched the whole way through of yours, obviously Jasper and Lady yeah. Dara. Um, yeah, they would yeah. fall under that category, I'd say. I don't mean to be like disrespectful to <laughs> anyone, anyone else who was in them, but I mean, they are, I mean, they're, yeah. they're absolute gems. Young in cheek. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. of course. But, but we're, you've, you've made we're not it, taking ourselves, you've, we're not you've taking ourselves it, too serious. No, no, you know maybe I mean? not. And but you've actually made it look like that you, that you are, so it's perfect for me because uh, cause people will be like, ah, oh, is this fucking serious yeah. or not? But yeah. I've seen some of your other films, not all the way, not all the whole way through. But yeah. like they're normal films, and and you're actually quite yeah. a good actor. So I was like, thank you, my man. So I was like, there's no way. Well, as in, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a good judge. But, but uh, oh, I, was, I, I, I love, I, I love how you, I love that you mentioned um, that one of the girls had reminded you of Irene from Home and Away. It's just a fucking bleach job and the makeup, isn't it? I mean, like it's just, it just fucking laid right out of there. Yeah, I mean, Neighbours and Home and Away, fun. like here. Well, I don't know what. Apparently, it's not yeah. the same in Australia, but here in the late '80s, mid '90s, Neighbours. And Home and Away were massive. Like every fucker watched it. Everyone. Oh, massive! Yeah, massive. Was it the same? I can tell you something note? right now. Go on. Well, what happened? What ha What's happened was, which is quite embarrassing for the local industry, is that Neighbours was only making money in the UK. Hence, they axed the show, and it's yeah. only been recently that Amazon's repicked it back up. Yeah. Um, Sydney, because Sydney's home and away and Melbourne is neighbours, so they've always been a little bit of a rivalry between the yeah, two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so if you're in Sydney, you're home and away. If you're Melbourne, you're neighbours. Um, <laughs> both those staple shows. I, I, I compare them to EastEnders, or if you're in New Zealand, it'd be Shortland Street. That's how I look okay. at it. I think here, people from the yeah. south or people from like the south watch the EastEnders and people in the north watch Coronation Street or whatever. I mean, they're, That's they're, I mean, they're, they're yeah. both...
Like, yeah, so so have you have you ever worked with anyone from Neighbours or Home and Away? Oh yeah, I, I had. You um, must have done. Oh god, yeah, I had uh, I had a girl that was in model behaviour, and she. <laughs> no, no, and I'm, not, she I'm actually I've actually only got this. So I'm this, doing this generally. That was not on purpose. No, that this is not from now on. If I drink Red Bull, it's because it's, it's all I've got here. So it's yeah. it's real. It's real. Yeah, <laughs> I should have got mine. Take, um, actually, I've probably still got a slab out the back. I, the I fucking bet you've thing. got a few. Your fucking, your fucking shed looks like the fucking Minotaur truck. Life and supply. Yeah. Oh, mate. Um, yeah, so there was a, a thing where um, uh, there was a girl playing my daughter in Model Behaviour, and she actually, from that as a showreel piece, she got cast as one of the, the main cast right, and ended okay. up doing like 300 and something bloody episodes. So fucking there's up. been a few actors there where I've... Um, uh, had a hand in kind of, I guess, discovering them, you know, but that, because that, on the street, a hand in. okay, right. That's casting. Casting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was, what was one of your videos? I just saw it said, um, um, uh, the thing on a roller coaster. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, so in, in, in fear in 96, have you seen, have you seen fear? I love that film. I just it's, watched I it the other day. I I absolutely it. brilliant. I love that film. It's excellent. I love it. I um, love that like, film. That's, and I love that, a listen that is something that happened. And I've got to pick stuff for the thumbnails. I've got to pick stuff that's going to make people watch. So, like, if there's something about someone it. getting fingered on a roller coaster, it's more interesting it. than, than a stalker. The, the, um, the uh, Alyssa Milano, who you know was with Corey Haim as well for quite a while. Right, I, I didn't girlfriend. know that. No, no. Yeah. Well, that, that's that's no in my opinion of him, but, um, yeah. Because <laughs> she's, I mean, she's obviously she's good looking, but what an, on yeah. Twitter, what an absolute twat she is. I mean, like... Oh, look, I watched one of her new films on Netflix and I've got to be honest with you, I, I couldn't get through it. I was, like, halfway and I was just... I, I can't... It, it was really hard to watch. Um, yeah. Self, self-indulgent. self You could tell she'd financed it herself. It was a yeah. bad script. Yeah. Just It just didn't have the energy. didn't have the electricity, you know. She'll but, always... Um, charm, charmed is as far as I'll go on her. I think yeah. Charmed, that's, that's the last... Yeah. I used to love that. I agree. Uh, I agree. <clears throat> well, yeah. when Buffy finished, that was, like, the next best thing. While we're on the topic, though, you do like Corey Haim, obviously. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Yeah, I like, yeah. I, yeah. I like both the Corys. But, um, Same. but I, w- I was uh, recently um, informed about a situation involving Corey Feldman. Uh, do that tell. Came to, that came to light during an episode of Wife Swap USA. Oh, my uh, God. So I don't know if I'm uh, going to spoil this, spoil your childhood here, but Corey Feldman's slightly somewhat problematic, and not just for, like, weirdos, yeah. but for normal people. He was running this yeah. thing called Corey's Angels, which is a bit like Hugh Hefner's no, Playboy. It. Yeah, it's, it. it's, it's it's essentially like, uh, well, I don't know how to describe it's it. A, it's a, yeah, it's like the poor man to Hugh Hefner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, I mean, it's obviously yeah. compl- it's like a cult, and he's he's oh, treating these he's crazy. treating these women like absolute <laughs> filth. <laughs> uh, but nice. and, you know, it's funny to watch on Wife Swap, but actually, it's it's quite serious. But um, yeah. Well, it's, well I will tell you this. You'll love this because when he first came to Melbourne, um, I met him at a place called Feldman's Bar where a guy right. had actually had, had opened his own bar, called it Feldman's Bar, and you would have, you know, little little monitors around the bar playing a Corey Feldman movie. And I think right, he did okay. it just to meet him because he found out about it and came over. And I went yeah. down and met him that night. And I think, I believe I was the first handy shook off the plane, which was right. quite a moment for me. Yeah, but yeah. what was crazy was that he was wearing for the first time it was the reveal of the Corey's Angels T-shirt. So I was right, looking okay. at him up and down going, oh, what's going on here? And then it was, yeah, and he had a couple of girls with him at the time and I'm pretty sure they ended up being in the Angels group. Right, so okay. I kind of met him at, at, like in, in the flesh at the birth of that. Um, and, he, and he went and it went crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like that's this whole thing, like, he's just off the wall. And, and the... Um, the reviews he's getting now and the, and the singing and so, like it's bad, you know, it's terrible, yeah, yeah. It's, it's sad, you know. The, well, the I mean, stuff I, I see is really it's a bit sick. Yeah, I was showing a video of him uh, on stage and some and singing the song from the fucking Lost Boys, and I just thought, Jesus, yeah. this is like it's it's really Full sad on. when people uh, go Full around on. and like you know flog their flog a dead horse that the, well not a dead horse but um, too much, you know, a four fifty year old oh, horse. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. That's going, yeah, that's going too far. I mean, that's yeah. that's ridiculous. Um, I, I, I'm trying. I mean, we talk about my films and whether I'm being serious or intentionally making them funny. But you think about that level where these guys have already already had their time in the sun. They've already yeah. got money. 
they don't, yeah. but like, do they really need to do that as well? Like, yeah. what's the point? Like, uh, what, I, the world that they're in, the mind, the mindset they're in. What's yeah. um, so, uh, so blown away yeah. obviously, was the inspiration for uh, Lady Terror. Uh, uh, is that a yeah. film you've seen, you've seen a number of times? One of your favorites? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. I think for me, I, I think it's their age because, you know, when you watch Lost Boys and Licensed to Drive and, and, they're, and they're young teenagers, and, that, and that, I guess they're the films that grabbed, grabbed me and, and us. Yeah. But when you get to Blown Away, they're kind of at that, they're, they're, now, they're almost a man. And yeah. there's not a lot of movies, you know, that got released where they're at that age, looked great, yeah. had already had a, you know, a catalog. Eggert was hot. She was in her prime. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just love the, you know, I love an action thriller. That's my genre. So yeah, yeah. it just, it just fit. It was everything I like. Um, yeah. And I've rewatched it so many times. And I think I told you that I had Haim attached to a movie quite a while ago. And, uh, like a legit a legit horror film that I had cast him in and then he died you know and it yeah. was um it was I think a week before he was supposed to be on a plane to meet me yeah. so it just haunted me and so I think when I got to that film because it was my 10th I uh, I thought you know what I'm just going to do my own that that maybe I would have cast him in if he yeah, had been yeah. alive yeah no fair so, enough yeah Oh, that's sad. A bit of a bookend. Yeah, what a what a yeah, uh, uh, what a somber story to something that's supposed to be funny. But there, you go. well, it's not supposed to be funny. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, um, but, but you know that, that that that's kind of the backstory. But but we still embarked on our own mission as a as a team and, and made our own film. And we, you know, it's still its own entity, and it was fun. But yeah. there was just that little bit of, I guess, uh, arch archival haunting that was going on with me personally that I wouldn't yeah, have, yeah. that I probably didn't even translate very well to the the cast and crew that would be my own personal thing yeah. um but uh, but I'm glad that I got it done man because during that period as well during the covid lockdown we didn't even know if we'd ever make another movie Yeah. So uh, I'm going to get on to some some uh, Jasper comments. So underneath my video, there sure. were some comments. I've already read. I've already read uh, one out for you from Greg Nielsen. Uh, Cara asks, and I think I've got the answer for this. It, I should call her Queen Cara. Sorry, is Nathan Hill in on the joke? <laughs> and, and I'm assuming on we Jasper. Got... Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm in on the joke on Jasper. Yeah, okay, That's okay, it's intentional good. all the way. Right. Good. Got the next one from somebody called Urge to Pee, who's one of my favourite contributors. Uh, and this is brilliant. So Urge to Pee says, Holy Christ, I've just read Nathan Hill's IMDb page. I shit you not, but under trademarks, it has his films almost always have a staircase <laughs> leading downwards. What the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, the well, trademark. As, so, as, opposed well, to, as opposed to those staircases that only go up. Yeah, go on. <laughs> no, I think it's more in reference to no, no. It's 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 a director's trait because if you like, you know, if you if, let's just take Tarantino for example, you know, you you'll find a video right now online that says you know the style of Tarantino film, and you'll get feet, and you'll yeah, get yeah, okay. you know the um, I mean you can see all the trademarks. What was what happened was was when I made my first short professional short film in film school, yeah. there was a specific scene where the couple descended down the stairs into a basement. Okay. And subconsciously, uh, what I noticed in a lot of the films was that there was, as far as thematics go, there was a staircase where the characters went down. So right. I had that in my first short film. I had it in Hide and Seek. It just became this kind of ongoing thing. So what, what I likened it to was more, uh, particularly in a horror, uh, metaphor for the characters go, going into their own hell or going into yeah. their uh, abyss or their psyche and having to kind of figure it out you know so because a lot of my movies they're, they're compression style they're putting a few characters in a small space almost claustrophobic space yeah. having an event and seeing how they react which is right, a compression okay. style of directing so that's a legit trademark so if you watch all my films you'll always see there'll be a trademark shot where someone's going downstairs but it'll be the lead and it'll be going it'll probably be act three where they're having to go in and kind of figure out the mission, so like to speak. in like in Jasper towards the end, where he goes downstairs, and the three the three the, the most uh, unthreatening thugs ever are waiting by the door. Is that compression? Is no. that is it? 
Well, yeah. what I loved though was what you said about the because you were spot on. The um, you know when he comes out of the uh, of the dungeon and it looks like he's popped out of an Oompa Loompa door. Yeah, what the fuck? What the fuck was that? that about? Yeah, yeah. What, so what? That I mean, was where crazy. You... That was crazy. So, so one of the actresses, I was short on one location for that scene, and I was talking to one of the actresses, and she said to me, "Oh, I've got this crazy basement at my house. Come and check it out. You might want to shoot there." And I was like, "Oh, yeah. that sounds cool. I'll check it out." And I couldn't believe that this basement, which was legit, yeah. had this fucking oompa loompa door. And I just yeah. kind of went down rabbit hole. I was like, you know what? I'm going to shoot here because this is this is hilarious. This is ridiculous. Yeah. So I, was, I okay, actually right. did it on purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, makes, that makes total sense. It, uh, fits in with the hysteria of the rest of it. You know what I mean? It just seemed yeah. to fit in some in a it, weird way. Well, yeah, I didn't know what the hell that was. I don't know whether you're yeah, superimposed. The other, the other thing is, uh, the other thing that Ernst the P points out is that under trivia, it says about you, yeah. he's best known, sorry, he's, not, he's known for reciting lines from the Predator to his friends. <laughs> I did it yesterday. I, so I rang, up, I rang my friend and I said, I think I said to him, um, you know, son of a bitch is dug in like an Alabama tick. You know, right. and, and it's a dialogue. Right, you know? okay. So, so, it's a, um, yeah, yeah, fine. Because yeah, because it's not. It's oh, more of a, it's not, so it's not like oh, should we invite Nathan or who's Nathan? Oh, he's the guy that recites the predator lines. <laughs> to recite predator lines. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, that would be cool, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Now I just loved that film so much growing up. So if I um if I made a phone call to a good friend, I would you know in character drop a line and they'll go ah, oh, it's Nate, you know. Do you know what? I only watched The Predator in the last six months for the first time. Really? Oh my god! Yeah, that and, amazing. and yeah, and it's uh, yeah. I mean, it was good. I mean, I enjoyed Catch it. Enjoy it. Sorry, yeah, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant I, film. I watched it because Prey was coming out. I wanted to. Oh, yeah. I, I, thought, I mean, yeah. actually, I expected that to be fucking shit, but it wasn't actually. That bad. <laughs> like, it was. It was, yeah. it was actually all right. Surprising for a Disney. That's probably the least yeah. amount of damage that Disney's done to a franchise like ever. Good call. Good call. Um, because yeah, I, I mean, it might call. not be good, but like all the others have, have just like I don't know if you've seen do that. You like, um, do you like Nicholas Winding Refn, like Drive, Neon Demon? Do you know those films? Only God bit, Forgives. Bit, bit pretentious. Bit, bit, bit like pro, those are proper yeah, film yeah, people films, right. and I'm not. So like, have you ever watched? <laughs> have you ever watched any any Lifetime movies? Oh well, I you think prob you probably haven't. Like, Most people um, haven't. No, no, I, I liked, um, I mean, if you're talking to like the midday matinee, the TV movie, I liked yeah, yeah. a lot of Farrah Fawcett stuff. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like extremities and like, you know, those real kind of hardcore 80s midday matinees where, where like really sh shit went down. Like you'd be like yeah. fucking gobsmacked to be, you know, playing in the middle of the day. Yeah. Um, heavy dramas, I, I love those sort of films. Yeah, no, that's right. So, they, and I think they they've definitely checked, they've moved on. So, made for TV films back in like the eighties and maybe even nineties yeah. were like there was quite like they touched on some pretty like serious subjects. Uh, I also these, think you're right. I think one of the comments one of someone said on one of your comments about my films was that it would have like, or maybe it was another critic saying that you know it would have been better as a TV TV movie. And to be honest, I think a lot of mine are TV movies because. They play out like each set is almost like a little studio. It's a couple of talking heads. Like yeah. my movies could easily have been refashioned as TV movies as opposed to feature films. You know, yeah. like I think I think they are a bit more TV movie. In fact, yeah. I mean that. that you know, to be honest, whoever said that, it wasn't anyone on my on my um, on my comments. Must have been someone else. But, um, but whoever said that is is I I feel is possibly make more marking on the quality than they are for, for the style. <laughs> but I don't. But I don't. Yeah. I don't accept that. I don't accept that these days made for TV films are any worse than what comes out of Hollywood. I just don't accept it because yeah. I, at, yeah. least, at least yeah. the Lifetime films, which I, which I do enjoy watching. Like obviously, I, I put them out as a joke because they are funny and there's some bad script writing and blah blah blah. But like they are at least at least something happens and it's actually all right not like a lot of this a lot of these films yeah. nothing happens and you're like what's fucking nothing happened? happens nothing yeah um. nothing happens exactly did you watch um rings of power are you a lord of the rings fan um okay Lovely. so next uh so next uh so what is what's next for you then what have what have we got coming up next yeah so the next one you'll love because it's um well, it is the sci-fi. So this is this is my you know my, my heist without the heist movie. You know, it's it's right. been done very cleverly. Yeah. Uh, 
it's described as a sci-fi erotic drama is what it is. And I'm playing an astronaut. So this was fun because this is the first time I got to do proper green screen and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of visual effects in this one. Oh, Um, We have wrapped. Yeah. You'll love it, Joe. Um, it's, it's, in fact, I do remember the first day and uh, the cameraman, like I was doing some stuff and he, st- and he just stepped back from what he was doing and he just started laughing and he was like, this reminds me of those crazy black and white sci-fis from the 60s. And I went, you've got it. You know what I mean? You, right, you, okay. You're on to it. So and right. thank God he got it. Or, or, um, or was so he just saying, was he just and, and it, again, like, what you're laughing at? And he was like, uh, it reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 he was, he, he was invested. He was in there. Okay. He was on par. And, and I thought he's got it. So, you know, I think, um, you know, if you can ima- imagine Jasper in space. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm already imagining um, but you, You'll love it. The you'll love itself. it. So we just yeah. started editing. Yeah, Is we just that, started. Are any of the actors from Jasper or Lady Terror going to appear in this sci-fi film? Uh, no, there's only one girl that has been kind of with me along the way for a few years, but we did a couple of short films, so there's no real... It's pretty much right. a new cast, and there's right. actually quite a few American actors in this one because because I've got a guy from NASA and I've got a guy... It's 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 because it, 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 the guy works at NASA, so there's, there's, uh, there's some American cast, which was nice to have a bit of a... Uh, to have some rounds with them, so yeah. um, it's a great film. I mean, I, I, just from just from looking at the footage, I, I think it's better than Terror. I really do. No, oh, okay. Well, that that's disappointing from, from my yeah. point of view, but um, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are there Good are call. there are there yeah. others are there other others in your back catalog? So model behavior, I've heard a bit about. I started that. That looked a bit normal for me. What? Um, but is that no? Is that probably too normal for you. Yeah. Um, okay. I think, yeah, I think that one's too normal. The one that you would love, though, which I, which is, it's a bit hard to get, but it's the Revenge of the Guaylo, because this is, imagine Jasper as a martial artist in Chinatown oh. trying to take on the triads. Right, Boom. okay. You'll fucking love it. You've right, got to watch okay. Revenge of the Guaylo. Right, I'm checking that out. Uh, so on to, on to the onto the fighting. So you've obviously made this, in Jasper, it was a yeah. bit like, oh, that you were just a normal guy. But in um, in Lady Terror, yeah. you're some sort of right. Jake is some sort of um, like hardcore martial artist. Uh, I mean, well, <laughs> what the hell? Was, and and uh, the, also well, the guy, the guy who you got to attack yeah. you. I mean, uh, yeah. what the fuck yeah, was yeah, that? Callum. The kick, yeah. I couldn't believe so, it. But this was this was where the comedy kicked in a little bit because uh, coming off of into the Guaylo, because I do have a martial arts background and it is something that I used to do. Oh, but okay. but what was funny was when we did that scene, one of the crew members stepped back and went, and you, it, it reminded, you would have loved it. He stepped back and he goes, oh, okay, so he's a lawyer that kicks ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I was like, it. you got it. <laughs> so but, I mean, uh, to be honest, if I, if I was putting myself in a film, if I made, if yeah. I'd made a film and I'd put all the yeah. effort in and I was going to be the one, yeah. I'd be like, right, number one, all the women want to shag me. Number two, <laughs> I'm, I'm, fuck, I'm fucking rock hard. And number three, oh, just give me a job. Yeah, right, I'm a lawyer and I'm an astronaut or something like that, yeah. Because yeah. it's totally yeah. realistic as if that's what Ridiculous. happens. And the yeah. people say, oh, but hang on, just a minute. You don't exactly... Shut up! I'll, I'm doing it and that's the end of it. <laughs> yes, yes. Brilliant. Absolutely, because we can. And, yeah, well, um, right, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but no, oh. I think, yeah, I think that was... That was pushing it it was pushing it a bit to have him as uh, to fight as well as he could but but again but he had to take out that guy because he had to get the, inst- in the information to extract to find anton so it was that was just the, the mechanics of it that, and, right, and, okay. but yeah. that guy is obviously right footed and went for a standing kick with his left foot that looked uh, uh, i mean whoever that guy is has he ever like has he ever like thrown a ball or caught one or like or run in a straight <laughs> line you know what? that no, I mean, I can't believe. Yeah. So, I mean, nobody can yeah. be that bad at pretending to fight. But don't forget, he was thug, and he was supposed to be not a great fighter. He was supposed so to be no, a bit okay. of a good. No, I, I accept. I accept that he's not a great fighter. But yeah. not a great fighter like throws rubbish punches or tries to grab. <laughs> oh, okay. um, 
Yeah, brilliant. And I, yeah. Anton, absolutely brilliant. And the guy, yeah, I can't, remember, can't remember his name from uh, Jasper, the guy that's like the mini Anton with the moustache that's got that voice. Yeah. Uh, is that a, is that yeah. a put on voice? Is duh, 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 duh. Oh, Ralph. Yeah, yeah, so that's Max Marchi Marchioni. So he, you know, he's got the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. 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 It, he, he's, I mean, he was a chronic smoker, and that's where he got the voice. He's, a, he's actually a pretty famous Italian drummer who goes by the pseudonym... Because um, there's Max Marchioni, and then there's a, he's got another name. It's escaped me. But he right. um, he was approached to be in a movie by Dario Argento, and he said who, no, which who, who I couldn't. Oh, okay, I don't know who really. that is. I don't know who that is. Um, Suspiria. He did all the the, the Italian horror films in the seventies. Oh, okay. Really famous. Right. Okay. Guy. But, well, his daughter's Asia Argento. She was in Triple uh, X. She's right. Pretty, okay. Pretty, I know the one. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Yeah. Got, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but anyway, so he he kind of knocked that back. But he was um, he had that crazy voice. But yeah, but the Anton, I loved your comments because I always saw him as as Danny Trejo. And that's exactly no, that's was, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the interesting thing with 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 Anton was, you know, I thought back to in the eighties, like when you get a VHS cover and you'd see this guy's face and you'd go, oh, it's that actor. But when you watched it, it was someone else. He was yeah. so much like Treo that we, right. for one, at one point we were going to just pretend it was his brother. You know, we we're going to sell right. the film based on the fact that, you know, this kind of probably was, it, oh, my God, it could be Treo, but it wasn't. I mean, it was just remarkably so similar. It was crazy. Yeah. So, And that got me, got, I, just, I just hitched on him straight away because I was, you know, all about wanting to make that B-grade action thriller. He yeah. just fit in perfectly. He well, he's actually, he's actually in that. Sonny Trejo is in um, uh, some Lifetime stuff now, which I can't imagine he's getting paid particularly well for. So uh, he's yeah. probably up for grabs, I would have thought, the real no. one. Oh, yeah. And, 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 you know, I've got a friend who's done a film with him, and I believe, I mean, I'm not allowed to say how much money they got him for a couple of days, but it wasn't a lot. And no, he's, he's sort of, his quality control has gone down the toilet. He'll just yeah. do anything if you throw money at him, and I can't, that kind of annoys me. Well, he was you know, in. Uh, he was in like to come Andy's... from heat. Yeah, Andy Sidoris stuff. He's been. He in did as well. some good stuff, but then he kind of sold his soul, and now he just does whatever. Like, there's a story where he went on set and like he hadn't learned his lines, and he didn't care, and he just went, "Yeah, yeah what is it called next?" Like he's just gone from one film to another, taking a paycheck. It was like he's really lost the well, heart he's... for it. I think he's, he's a lot older it. than he looks, though. A lot older than he looks. Oh yeah, he? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, credit right. to him because he does look extremely powerful. I can't remember exactly how old he is, but he's like, I think he's up there with like mm. uh, mid 70s or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. He's had his yeah. time in the sun. He's, he's, he could stop. He doesn't need to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Enough. Yeah, quite. Um, and yeah. I'm glad you liked Anton. Yeah, I love Anton. So while, uh, while we're on Anton, I, I, I asked Felida and she didn't, I didn't get a, quite a straight answer. I'm not sure if she knew the answer. Yeah. When Anton bursts yeah. into her house, is he, yeah. is he yeah. going to beat her up with a whip this. or is it a full Severus Snape? <laughs> what is it? Now I wish that he had a beat her with a whip because I would have filmed that. That's not a bad idea. Right, so it's, so um, it's, it's sexual assault, is it? I, absolutely. Oh, and okay, right. The okay, whole, fine. Absolutely. And the whole thing about the psychology behind Candace is that when she manipulates Jake, she's yeah. kind of trying to take control of her sexuality back because she's lost that. So when she's actually alluring him, like as Sharon Stone did in Basic Instinct, she's yeah. using the sexuality to, to really destroy him. Yeah. And she knows she's hot. Um, and that was all part of the psychology as well. Yeah. That was a take, weapon. It didn't take her long, did it, to get, Jake, to get Jake on board with the whole killing didn't her. Didn't take her. long. I, I realise you're a lawyer, <laughs> but in about, in about three days' time, you're going to murder my stepdad. Yeah, yeah all right. It's like, what? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, that, could I, have, I love... hey, that could have been the title. Yeah. How, 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 how to... <laughs> how, you know, it's, it's like, you know, honey, I shrunk the kids, except it's, you know, um, how, how baby, I killed your stepdad. How you'll kill my stepdad. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> uh, and his, de his death scene... I mean, oh, that yeah. was just yeah. absolutely brilliant. Like, I mean, how like, good was he? Why didn't you just he get him to fucking die straight away instead of the whole thing where it's like, what the, the fuck torch. are you doing? You fucking shot I me, you it. cunt! It's just like, whoa, how is this going yeah. off? The... Excellent. Yeah. I and think the you know when we 
well, when I screened it to the audience the first time, they loved that. That got just so many laughs. And yeah, yeah. someone come up to me and said, you know, that's why I love your films because they're off the wall. They, they, you, yeah, yeah. you do shit like that that, yeah. that I don't see anywhere else. And that's why they came. They love that. Yeah, that's yeah. the gold right there. Right. Okay. Well, fair enough. If that's the case, then you fucking nailed that. Nailed it. Because uh, I watched, I, me and G watched, we watched Lady Terror together. We um, awesome. saved us, saved us money on Amazon, and we were honestly like hissing ourselves like at some at some it. of those bits, <laughs> like, rewinding it. So uh, speaking of like Amazon, <laughs> where is where would you? Do, so if you wanted people to watch your stuff, where's the place to go? Because I'll obviously yeah. link this in the description below uh, where you can get it. I think now, I think what well, Prime UK, Prime US but yeah. also Google Play and Apple TV. And there's quite right. a lot on Tubi. You'd be surprised. Yeah, and Vudu as well. Okay. Yeah. Right, so there are a lot. But, uh, so but not, not Netflix, not, 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 not a Netflix at no. the moment. I think I've got one maybe coming up. Yeah. Right, okay. Excellent. Well, uh, so uh, we shall we shall wrap. That's all the questions I have for you. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah, um... Because I mean, I love the channel, you know, and and I think your Good. review of Blown Away was one of the things that drew me to you in the first place. Yeah. Um, I just think it, I just love it. I just love the channel. I just feel like it. It's just refreshing. Um, there's not. There's nothing else like it. You know. I, I mean, I've checked. You know, I check online. I'm online every day. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess I want to ask you because your your taste in film is similar to mine. I think. The, the the erotic thriller and the eighties and the nineties is that also something that you were that you grew up with uh, no, I mean, the most? I think when I was like when I was like sort of um ten eleven twelve that was sort of, sort of getting hold of that was like you know it was gold dust like look everyone gold, I've got eleven yeah. days eleven nights. and it's, I, I you know when I decided to do YouTube I was like well what do I know I don't know anything that other people don't. But what I do, what I do sort of have some knowledge of is like how many people discuss these things. There's got to be people my age about these erotic Good thrillers, idea. like Eleven Days, yeah. Eleven Nights, and like, I know everyone's seen it. So I thought, oh, if I was more thinking yeah. on the lines of cultural references that people will miss, because the number of people you meet, like, have you seen this? No, I haven't seen that. So I thought, what happens in this? This is a good thing. And then I start. It didn't. It didn't start as a joke. Like it started as this is what happens. But then I started mm. laughing throughout the thing, and then people started liking mm. the idea, the the fact that I was laughing at it. So I've just turned it into a piss take, really. And uh, I said the, so the you, other thing. Your, cap your captions are gold. Absolute no. gold. They're from films I'd never seen before. So a lot of them are from like these uh, 2010s, uh, like porn films, like with like, Frankie it. Cullen and stuff like that. <laughs> and, yeah, that's uh, they're, they're so good because they're, it's, you want to get over actors, essentially. Yeah. So, I've, uh, so yeah. I've got you and I've got you saying, I think, what, obviously, and the, uh, my favorite one, which I don't mind of yours, that I don't mind to get in that as often, is when that little weird guy says, is that a fact? And you go, it is actually. It's like, <laughs> Because that works every time I say that something happens, I'm like, that is ideal. So you yeah. just squeeze that right in. And it's, it gets a few love seconds it. of people laugh at it. So, yeah. No, I'm yeah, really I love them. Thank you for that. Because I love, I love the, the visual bites that you've, that you've grabbed. I've seen a few of them. They're, they're yeah, a choice. Yeah. They're great. Yeah. They're great. So Sadly, yeah. I didn't manage to get any um, into uh, the paramedic who stalked me yesterday, but um, this is just a reminder for anyone <laughs> watching. If you haven't seen my yesterday's video, the paramedic who stalked me, yeah. please check it out. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, nah. no, and um, fun. I think yeah, but you need you need to watch Re Revenge of the Guaylo. I think that's you, okay. You may actually enjoy that more than Terror. You don't know what's around the corner. That's a right. gem. Okay, all right. A yeah, gem. well, I'm, I'm all gem. over that then because I'm I'm, I'm now struggling for uh because I'm I'm it's now got to the point where I'm really struggling to get through through these films. I mean, like as I said, yeah. like yeah. How many have you done? How many have we got on the channel? Is it a uh, hundred? 165 i think 165 that's a lot man and 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 it ha and it how like how short a time oh uh, i've been doing this since uh i think april last year so it's just over, just that's over a year. Lot, so i mean i tried to put like, i tried to put three a, a week lot. out but recently now i i do my live tuesdays uh so yeah. it will you know i've yeah. slightly reduced but um yeah i did i did that's be quite prolific because you got to build it up first i mean they, they do take me a long time and uh, and I have become fucking yeah. lazy recently. I'm naturally lazy. I'm not someone who, as my dad would say, he's Don't not get one of life. Do you not? Right. Okay. <laughs> no. Well, good. Don't get I, try, I try and be as professional things about as possible. I don't like to put out shit, uh, and I like everything to look no, like all right. But I also don't want to. Well, pay it's very. It's, it's, yeah. 
you've got your brand and 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 it's all it's it's all formatted brilliantly and and straight away you go oh, that's Jay you know it's, it's yeah, identif- yeah. Identif- identifiable um, yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. and uh, and it's all in a rhythm and everything's everything's um, succinct like it's it's brilliant. Well, that's, that's, um, that, I'm glad you said that because that's like a really big deal for me. You've also pointed out mm-hmm. about the music, which I obviously wrote myself, which, uh, which I'm really, I really love proud. the music. Excellent. Well, I'm really because people don't say people don't say these things to me, Laura, because but I I like having everything I beautiful music. and like brand and stuff like that. It's uh, yeah, Mate, so you, it's good. well, I will say this to you. There's one thing I, I think you'll like. At the tail end of all the videos, when you get the dancing montage and yeah. you hear that track. Yeah. It the first time I the first time I saw that I, I legitimately was transported back to the time of my youth and I fucking loved it. Excellent. That's it. It That's was it. so good. <laughs> yeah. It was so good because you know you can you know go down the rabbit hole, play some eighties stuff, but you've seen it before. Yeah. But I hadn't seen that, and but 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 that was made recently, but it still gave me the feeling I had when I was in the eighties. Right, and that's, that's a very hard to that do. This is exactly what I went. So, um, so I was uh, my friend and I uh, decided a, a couple of years ago to like, to, as a joke, do like an eighties pop duo. And then, so I made a, <laughs> I made a few songs, like a few tra- like tracks. Didn't put any singing on them or anything that had the sound yeah. of eighties with eighties production value, but they obviously weren't eighties songs. And that that particular piece of music is. It's loosely based on um, the Duran Duran late eighties, early nineties stuff. Uh, oh, so yeah, yeah, so, I love that. yeah, but no, it's yeah. good. It's good. It's good to hear. Oh, yeah, I'd listen to it. I, had, I told you that I shazammed it because I was yeah. trying to find it. I wanted yeah. to. I wanted to download it. Yeah, yeah. It's. it's I mean, I'm afraid. I'm afraid it just goes on and on and on like that for ages. <laughs> so it's, it's not. It's not exactly. A, there's not a variety <laughs> piece. Let's say that. It just doesn't say. So uh, during the trailer of all my videos, it's got one part of it, and then the other part is pretty much at the end. Also, if you ever watch any of my live my live streams, is a minute and a half. Uh, I've watched a couple. That. Yeah, yeah. So it's always got the music at the start. Um, have you done uh, requests? For yeah, I have. For movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah. I've done a few from the I'd same people. I'd love to request you a couple. Yeah, do it. Do it. Yeah. Hey, we are saving the world, man. We're saving uh, the uh, planet. Unfortunately, I say if you are watching a lot of this has has to be cut because otherwise YouTube will tear my channel down. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, it's been, it has been a pleasure. It's very nice to meet you, and thank you very much for for you joining too. us. Absolute pleasure, um, and I'll do it again. Great, excellent. If you ever want to come on uh, Harang TV, if you're ever up at that stupid o'clock in the that'd morning, cool. just give us a shout. Excellent. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, okay. and your next film is Revenge of the Guaylo. Right, got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm on to yeah. it. I've got I've got awesome. a backlog of a couple at the moment, and then I'll get on to that one. <laughs> uh, I guarantee that G will want to watch it with me as well, so I'll make sure he does. I can't, I can't wait to hear the report on that. Excellent. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, and thank you for watching, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and check out this other video. Thank you. Thank you.